In previous videos, I've talked about the 90s resurgence of Gerry Anderson's Super Mario Nation TV shows in the 1990s. And in particular, how toy company Matchbox was quick to launch a series of toy lines based on some of these popular properties, including Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet, and Stingray. A few weeks ago, I looked at the three inch action figure scale line for Thunderbirds, and I looked at the in scale Thunderbird 2. And so for this week on Flashback Friday, I thought it would be fun to go all the way back to 1992 once more, but this time take a look at this Stingray action submarine. So as ever, let's start by taking a look at this packaging. And I'm a huge fan of the illustrated style of packaging. I love this kind of artwork on my toys, and this is lovely. This is a big, long, oblong box, and it is mostly just given over to this fantastic image of the Stingray sub firing its missile there. This looks really exciting, and I just love the colors they've used for this, and it just looks really fun. If we flip it over and look at the reverse, we can see we have an actual photograph of the model itself. This time, put in a bit of a diorama to look like it's underneath the sea, and it looks absolutely great. Again, this is equally wonderful artwork in its own right, and that uh, is really very nicely done. I really appreciate the effort they've gone to creating this diorama for this photo, because it, it really helps this toy pop. It looks really exciting and fun to play with, and it really sells the toy to me even now. Of course, we have a couple of little extra smaller icons there, showing some of the action features of this playset, and uh, we have that wonderful line, anything can happen in the next half hour, which is uh, obviously directly from the show. Once we remove the vehicle from the packaging, you can see it is mostly all one piece. The top there is detachable, but other than that, you can pretty much comfortably get this entire submarine into the box with uh, no resistance whatsoever, no assembly required, and it looks great. The proportions, dimensions, and the colours used on this sub look pretty faithful to what we see on screen, and I think they've done a very, very nice job of it. Now, I've already said in a previous Stingray video how much I love the design of this sub. I think it's so sleek and elegant, and they've captured that beautifully here. The design is very simple, but there are some fun little details. I really like how we've got the Stingray written on the side panel here. I love the contrast between the yellow and the lighter blue and the silver as well. It's very nicely done. We can see the number three on the fin there sticking out, and again, the silver lines are nicely applied. And we have that bubble where we can see a little bit of the engine works at the rear of the vehicle, which is fantastic. We also have this chunky plastic translucent rotating propeller blade at the back here. This is one of the key action features of this vehicle. It doesn't do an awful lot, it doesn't really link into any of the actions in the vehicle, but it is very nice to have this feature. Now, at the base of the vehicle, there is a pair of skis. Now, you'll have to forgive my ignorance if this is something that actually appears in the show, because I never remember the Stingray having these at any point in the show, but I, I could be wrong. I think it's on the toy simply to balance it and allow it to move and, and look like it's gliding across the surface of any particular hard surface you may have. Sadly, they're not retractable or removable, so they do compromise the look of this vehicle from certain angles. That said, if you're looking top down, usually you can't see them at all, and it does elevate it off the surface, which is kind of cool. It gives it that floating effect. Now, at the top of the vehicle, there is this periscope. It is a single molded plastic blue piece. There's no real detailing or paint apps on it, which is a shame because it would have been quite nice to have something here. But nevertheless, it does rotate and it does lift up and down, which is very cool. Now, of course, this vehicle is made in scale to fit with the three inch action figures that were made as part of this line. So I thought I'd share with you today a quick, close look at our main hero. Troy Tempest. As you can see, these are quite nicely moulded. There's actually a nice attention to detail and some great paint apps here. In terms of articulation, there is just five points. He can rotate his head from side to side. There's another swivel at the shoulder there, allowing the arm to swing up and down, and another one at the waist there, allowing the legs to kick forwards and backwards. Now, Troy was by no means alone in this collection. There was a whole wave of figures to support him with his supporting characters. As you can see, there's an additional four figures released in this set. You'll notice it's not quite as broad a range as a Thunderbirds collection. I think Stingray was definitely seen as the little brother of the Jerry Anderson shows when, when Smashbox came to making these toys. But nevertheless, this is a pretty cool lineup. And as I said, I have a great fondness and affection for these figures. Now, of course, we can move the top of the Stingray submarine to sit our figures inside. And there's actually two seats, space enough for two figures to sit in here. Of course, we're going to have Troy sitting in the cockpit in the driver's seat. 
And under the hood, so to speak, we can see a few more little details, which is quite nice at the reverse of the vehicle here. Again, the paint apps are very, very simple. It's just a mold of plastic, but they look very nice, and the sculpt is very good. A lot of detail in here. Likewise, if we look at the cockpit, we can see a steering wheel. Again, it is molded into the plastic, sadly, but the details are quite nice. And one of the things I really like about this vehicle is that when we put the roof back on, it fits in perfectly and snugly there. It looks pretty seamless, but we can see the figure inside through that transparent plastic screen. Now the sub has one main action feature and that is its firing missiles. But you'll notice there are these bays and I really like these lift up lids here where you can store extra additional missiles which is fantastic. And if you look behind it you can also see the mechanism that fires the missile in the chamber. Simply load the missile in the chamber, lock it back and fire using the switch at the back of the vehicle. And these missiles fire at quite a pace. And so there you have it. Unfortunately, it doesn't have much in the way of action features. It didn't have any of the electronic sounds that we saw on Thunderbird 2, which is a real shame. And I think there could have been opportunities to have this light up, which would have been really, really nice in certain places. But nevertheless, what we do have is a really nice screen accurate faithfully recreated stingray submarine i think it looks fantastic it's fantastic that we can have our figures sit inside it and of course it does have those firing missiles which i think is really really fun so this is a really nice addition and for me it fits very comfortably on display alongside my thunderbird 2. if you enjoyed this video please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon